Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Well, it is the 27th of April, and it seems like the last few days have gone by very slowly. But a lot has happened. Um, it's kind of amazing to watch the things going on in the world uh, with the headlines and stuff like that, with, oh, looking at Israel and what's going on over there. And it seems like there's like a surge of activity and then pause, and the surge of activity and pause. And the whole time we're watching this, we're just, we see inching closer and closer to to something horrible um i want to throw some points out there things that i noticed yesterday and i mentioned them a little bit to certain people and to, on a certain videos of other channels has anyone ever noticed they keep talking about the and i even shared it on the community tab They're, they keep talking about the ufo the big revealing of the ufos and they keep doing it and, and they're let little snippets of information out but they keep revealing and they keep revealing and they're like very soon, the government, the, the Pentagon, the, the NASA, somebody's going to come out with all this huge revelation about UFOs. Why haven't they done it yet? In fact, the last time I heard about this, a, a big major announcement before this one that they, they put up that I shared, they said, in 180 days, we're going to share it all. And they shared nothing. Shared a couple of videos, maybe. Why haven't they done that? Why haven't they poured that out? Why haven't they brought that forth and presented it? Maybe because a certain group of people are still here and they need to be removed before they can do it? Because they won't be deceived by this? Because they know what those things are? They're not aliens. They're not another race from another planet. They are demons. And we know they're demons. But see, if they do that now, there would be a huge outcry. The Christians would rise up. See, Satan is smart. He has to be careful. Certain things he cannot present because when he does, and if we're still here, you're going to hear huge outcry from Christianity. Hey, those are demons. Look, it's in the Bible. Hey, that's the Antichrist. Look, it's in the Bible. So he knows he can't do that. If we're here, we know what those things look like. And the conviction of the Holy Spirit would cause us to cry out. But they can't have that because that's going to cause the people to go, wait a minute, they're right. And more people will come to faith. Satan doesn't want that. He wants people going the other direction. So what I deduced out of that is the reason why they can't bring any of this stuff out, the reason why none of this can be presented is because we're still here. Now, the fact that they're talking about it saying, oh, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, tells me we're getting super, super close to a removal. Because it's almost like they're chomping at the bit to get this done. Why haven't we switched over to a digital currency yet? They got the system in place. Why haven't we done it? We're still here. Why haven't they brought out anything uh, that's going to definitely be uh, the mark of the beast? None of this stuff we have now is the mark of the beast. None of it. It's all attached to the system, the beast system, but it's not the mark. Why haven't they done that? We're still here. Why haven't they gotten rid of the Bibles? Why haven't they arrested the Christians? Why haven't they done any of this stuff? We're still here. The Holy Spirit is the restraining force spoken of in 2 Thessalonians. We're still here. They can't do it. The, as hard as they try, they can't do it. Remember what Biden said he was going to do in his first 100 days? He hasn't even done a third of it. Because a lot of it involves Christians. He can't do it. He's being held back. He's being pinned down. The Holy Spirit is holding all of this back. Have you noticed a surge in attacks from your family, friends, people online? And as soon as you speak a word from the Lord, a word from the Bible, it just ceases and stops. You're able to close the mouths of everybody who's your opponent. You wonder why that is? Holy Spirit. God's protecting his people. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know what's coming. I'm not going to pretend to know what's down the road. But let me tell you something. When you are secure in the word, and we've talked about this over the last few days in these videos, when you are secure in, your, in the word, when you are secure in your faith, the more you learn, the more you understand, and the more free you are, and that love of God and that spirit, that power of that spirit spreads throughout you. And you start to emanate that and show that to people. People's reaction to you changes. I've had people come up to me and start screaming in my face because I'm a Christian. And I just look at them. 
And they'll say all these things and they'll be waving their finger. And I'm like, do it. Do what? What you're thinking about doing. What am I thinking about doing? Do we need to discuss this in front of all these witnesses? I know what you're thinking about doing. Do it. What's holding you back? Nothing. I'm not going to file charges against you. Nobody's going to call the cops. Come on. Do what you're going to do. What you're thinking about doing. And you just you watch, you see in their eyes, and all of a sudden, something changes. They can't. That's not because of me. It's because of God. When you are secure in your faith, when you know the word, when you're sure of your salvation, when you have that confidence that comes from knowing your salvation. I know what I am. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm broken. I know I need him to save me. I know I need Jesus Christ to come redeem me. I know I stumble and fall every day. But I also know that I am a child of God. I know I'm protected. I know I'm watched over. And I know that no matter what happens to me, and this is the most important, no matter what happens to me, God reigns. So that one guy looked like he was about to do something. And if he'd have beat me down and beat me to death, it'd have been okay with me. I'm going to go be with the Lord and we'll deal with it. But you notice, you ever notice they can't seem to put, and the people that are doing all these writing, you notice they're not only, only doing it in certain areas. Those are the areas that have completely abandoned God. In the other areas where God still has a foothold, where there are still Christians, they don't do that stuff. They're being held back. None of the stuff that's going to happen in the tribulation can happen now. We're still here. That's why none of it has happened this last 2,000 years. We're still here. If in 72 AD, God would have removed the members of the church that were there at that time, all, this, all these things the Bible talks about, all these things we're seeing now would have happened instantly back then. Because the Holy Spirit, the restraining force, would have been removed from the earth. But we're still here. When I come across people that start reading me the right act, show me your scripture. We don't need to talk about scripture. I'm not, I, don't want to, I don't care about your opinion. Show me scripture. If you can't show me scripture, we're done talking because I'm not interested in your opinion. And the people shut down. They resort to insults because that's what their actual agenda was. The word of God, confidence in your faith, living the armor in Ephesians 6, that causes people to expose themselves. And they show themselves for who they are. They can't help it. Same thing's happening now. Notice how God is causing the Democrats to prove who they are. Look at how many news sources, how many media sources that have flipped and been like, wait a minute, these are the people we supported? This is nonsense. And they flipped. Forbes is one of them. I've seen a complete change in what they, what they show on their media. Fox is, was kind of floating there for a while, but now they're, they're starting to swing back. Several news sources are like, uh, in fact, what was the one gal quit her position? She was hardcore against Trump, and she quit because of what she saw. It's like, yeah, this isn't right. I can't do this. They realized the truth. Notice that the cops are staying in their jobs in most areas, but there's key areas like Portland, a few other places, where God's like, okay, come out. That's what they want. That's what we're going to give them. The one place, had a, they, they took um, a couple hundred thousand dollars. He was just on TV doing a press conference, and they were trying to get him off the TV because <laughs> he was stupid. They took a couple hundred thousand dollars out of their police force and saw a 173% rise in violent crime. Within a six-month period. That's horrible. God said, if that's what you want, okay. And let them have it. You don't want to have police and laws? There you go. You're going to see what the result is of that. There's fires in the streets every night. Go watch the movie Purge. That's how it is in those cities right now. They, they people call the police. We don't have anybody. What do you mean we don't have anybody? They all quit. We don't have anybody. We can't send anybody to you. Stay in your home, lock the doors. And, and some of them, they're telling them, if you have firearms, load them and be ready to defend yourself because we can't send nobody to you because we don't have anybody. Fire stations, police stations, closed. Locked up. See, God's not going to let this all go that direction while we're still here. 
you're going to see little bits of it, little pockets of these things. And they're going to they're going to flare up, but it'll stay in that area because that's where God's focusing it. Out here where where I'm at, it's quiet. In in Seguin, it's quiet. Most areas are quiet. But in those areas where they're completely turning against God, he's showing them what it looks like. Now, picture that on a worldwide scale, full force. That's what the tribulation will be like. There will be no place you can hide. You think all them horror movies are, are fake? Yeah, some of that stuff that's in them is, gonna be, is what you're going to be doing. Running from house to house in the middle of the night, hiding constantly trying to survive, trying to stay alive. Food, water, not even going to be an issue. You're just going to be fighting to stay alive. And I could get very graphic here, but I don't want to do that in this video of what's going to happen during that time. It is not going to be pleasant. It's going to be bad. <coughs> We're just getting a view of it, a taste of it. Why haven't we gone to war? They literally are bombing Iraq at our embassy. They're bombing shipping. This is us, Israel, um, uh, Iran, Turkey, Syria. They're they're all there's been bomb, there's missiles flying all different. They've been under missile attacks nonstop for the last three days. All why have we not gone to war? All of those are declarations of war. Why have we not gone to war? Russia's making threats. Why have we not gone to war? Why hasn't it spilled over? Because they're fighting. But why hasn't war been declared? God, He's holding it back. We're still here because that war, when it starts, is going to be a worldwide war. The signs are here. They're very, very vibrant. It's very clear. To, you can go in the scriptures and read down the list and go, well, yeah, that's all here. And what does Jesus tell us to do? Look up when you see that. Because I'm about to come get you and get you out of there. Stand strong, stay faithful, and know that I am the Lord, that I have control, that I'm watching over these things, and that our Father reigns. Just stand strong in the faith. And that's the encouragement we all need today. Stand strong. No matter what we see, no matter what we hear, no matter what happens, stand strong. The vaccine and the COVID, not even an issue. Stand strong. Don't sweat those things. Don't let those things get you down. Because those things are not going to come between you and God. Period. There's no debate on this. I don't care what these other nitwits say that are running around out there listening to other people and not doing their own research. I'm happy that I've reached, uh, well, I think this morning it was like over 700 people on Brightium. And that's getting that information is getting spread, showing them the truth, but giving them encouragement. Because I remind them, but if you're a Christian, don't worry about these things. You know you don't have to worry about these things. Stand strong in the faith. Look to God for everything. Be in the word. Because that's your direct connection to him. That's how you know what he wants. What he's looking for. What his will is. Is from this word. That's how you know how we are to conduct ourselves in this world. By going into his word and trusting what it says. And we can be encouraged. Because if we're seeing all these things. That's our indicator. That's our signal. I'm coming. Be ready. And a lot of people aren't ready because they're, they're not looking at this for what it says. And they're choosing to walk a different path. So we're going to, like we did last night, we pray for them. We're going to pray for everybody and lift them up. And all of us who are struggling, all of us who are fighting, all of us who are in the light and of the light that are standing out here, watching all this happening, knowing what's coming next, knowing what's after and how bad it's going to be. We need encouragement to keep going and to keep pushing forward and to keep doing what we're doing. And this morning we're going to pray Psalm 47. God is king over all the earth. No matter what changes, God is king because he's the one that created it all. And if that's the case, we have nothing to worry about. Oh, but the Bible says uh, Satan is the God of this world. Satan is being allowed authority in this world to do certain things. But just like I said in the beginning of the video, you notice how so much is getting stonewalled. 
See, Satan tried to kill the Jewish people. What stopped him? God. He used Hitler to try to wipe them out. What stopped him? God. How is it that they've survived in exile across the earth for 1,900 years and come back as a people with their original language? How is that possible? God. He's holding these things back. He's in control. And no matter what Satan says or does, no matter what he tries to do, if it's not God's will that it happens, he doesn't. He's not able to do it. He is stonewalled. And that's the end of it. Until that time comes when he is released full force on this earth to do what he wants. And that will be in the tribulation. You don't want to be here for that. Because you can't even imagine how terrible it's going to be. What's amazing to me is that by the mercy of God, people will survive to the end. That's amazing to me. Because to me, it should be everybody should be dead <laughs> because of what's going to happen. It's going to be horrible. So why would you do that to yourself? Why would you go through that? Why would you think that you could survive that? Put your, put your salvation, your life, your future in God's hands because it is only in God's hands that you can trust and be assured of what your future is going to be. And when you learn to do that, he will walk, he will uh, point your path. He will point your feet the right direction and pull you that direction. Don't resist him. Let him lead. And it, it, will, it makes a big difference in your life. So let's pray. Let's give glory to God and let's pray this psalm. Always keep in mind, no matter how far we as brothers and sisters are separated, we're connected. We're always connected. No matter what, no matter if all this shuts down and we can't talk to each other, we're still connected. Remember your brethren. If things ever come to a screeching halt and we can't communicate with nobody, because then all it takes is a flip of the switch and this whole system's gone. Remember your brethren. Pray for your brethren. Pray for yourselves. Pray for your family. That's we're connected by that spirit. And when we all pray, a lot of power is released. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, to lift you up, sing praises under your holy name, to preach and to sing and to shout out the works you were doing in this world. We see your hand working, and we thank you for that. We see the enemy and how they're just futile, desperate attempts trying to exert their plan, and you keep stopping them. The things that they're trying to do, the things that they're attempting to do, and yet they never spill over into the world now. And why? And what you showed me in your word is because we're still here. Because the Holy Spirit is still present in the world, holding these things back. And the world doesn't realize it. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you that we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that we have confidence in our faith and trust in you in looking and forward and knowing what your desires are, what your will is, and what the truth is. To look across the world and to see the things that people are doing and to know what is your will and what isn't your will. To know what you are doing and what you are not doing. To know what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. And all that comes from your word. We thank you for your word. I have to thank you every day for your word because it's amazing. Some of the things we discover in there are just awesome. and It's encouraging. But Father... All my brothers and sisters are struggling. We're all struggling. I'm struggling. We're tired. Everyone's worn out. Everyone's getting beat up on all sides. Health issues are happening. It's just a nonstop barrage that it just seems like we can't ever overcome. But you give us the victory. Our Lord Jesus has already won the victory on the cross. And we, through him we have that victory. But I pray for encouragement. I pray for strength. I pray that you take your mighty hand and put it on upon us. And energize us. Energize us in the gospel. Energize us in your word and in the truth. So that whenever the time comes, and whenever it is, we can stand and speak these things. That the Holy Spirit will overwhelm us. And we will speak the words that have meaning. Words that have power that come from your Holy Spirit. So that those that listen will know the truth. Will hear. Will understand. And maybe even get saved. That no enemy, no nothing formed against us will, will prevail no matter how hard they try. But they, also that we will always, always stand in full faith and trust in you. Without, without that, we have nothing. Without you, we have nothing. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you so much for that. We know you're God. We know you're king over all creation. We worship you as that king. 
And this morning, Psalm 47, we're going to declare that you are king. To the chief musician, a psalm of the sons of Korah. Oh, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. He will subdue the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us. The excellence of Jacob, whom he loves, Selah. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with understanding. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have gathered together. The people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. And Father, you are greatly exalted. Over all the earth. Over all of everything. We acknowledge you. We commend you. We worship you. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify you. We give thanks to you. We pray for your kingdom to come. Because the only redemption this world has is you through Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your sacrifice. We pray for your kingdom to come. We pray that your law is rule. We pray that when you come, that the world will be subdued under subjection through grace and mercy. And be in joy at your rule because your rule is perfect. We are waiting for that day. Looking forward to that day. But things have to happen first. I lift my brothers and sisters up for strength, for encouragement. That they stand in awe of your power and then are con can confidently declare that power. Declare that word, declare that truth to the world, to anyone, anyone who will listen. And even if they won't listen, we'll declare it anyway. Because we all need you, Jesus Christ. We all need you, Father. The whole world needs you. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Thank you for your salvation that you gave us by your death on the cross, Lord Jesus. Thank you for that salvation and that, that redemption that's coming. We're looking forward to that day. We pray for that day. Deliver us from this body of sin so that we may sin no more and be tempted no more, so we may stand in awe and in grace and in glory in your presence with our heads held high, not held down in shame. Help us to encourage each other and to hold each other up and to lift each other and to help each other across the finish line so that we can all cross together. We love you, Lord. We love you, Father. Thank you so much for everything that you are doing and what you're going to do. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you for this day that we can come together and pray for each other again. It is in your name, Lord Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. It is an amazing thing to know what we know. It's an amazing thing to be a part of God's family. To, to feel the work happening within you. And, and the energizing and the changing. And the encouragement and the strength even in the face of adversity and weakness. To feel that love spreading, that compassion spreading, to have that love for people. I had a very wonderful prayer last night for many that were deceived after the, the prayer video when I went to bed. And the concerns that I had, have, the guilt that I had, he took it away and I fell asleep like that. Before you go to sleep every night, go to the Lord in prayer. He will comfort you, and he will relax you, and he will give you grace. And he will show you what's going to happen, and he will take it into his hands. Because we can't effectively change these things, but through him. Because he's the one that changes it. He's the one that knows the heart. He's the one that changes the heart. God is the one that grants repentance. So we pray. And we continue in what we've been given. And we let the Lord lead in all things. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you guys in the next video.